Have you heard a preacher quote Amos 3.3, can two walk together unless they are agreed? What was Amos trying to tell us in that clever little phrase? Hello, I'm Clarence, I'm the preacher. Amos was trying to tell us something that was really simple. I mean, so simple, a kindergartner could understand it. But oddly enough, it gets a little complex when you bring in the adult psyche because a lot of adults will give lip service to Amos 3.3, and yet in their practice, it is obvious they don't believe what Amos was trying to tell us. What Amos was trying to say is that if you want to walk the same path with God, then you have to go the same direction God's going. You have to be in that actual same path with him. To put it in a more um, humble, childish way, you need to be putting your foot in the footprint of Jesus or the footprint of God as he moves on in front of you. And that's just really a, an extremely simple concept, but like I said, most people reject that. Most people don't like that idea. They would rather go blaze their own path. Kind of odd there if you ask me because everybody's trying to get to heaven in eternal life, right? And God's already said, look guys, I've got this. Follow me. I can get you there. And so we have the assurance that we can get there if we follow God. And yet most people go, no, 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 I, I don't trust you, God. I, I don't want to go your way. I want to make up my own path and see if I can get there on my own. That's kind of bizarre, isn't it? Yet that's what most people do. I, I find it more intriguing because we all have on average a three pound brain up here. Now we have a fantastic brain. Incidentally, if you didn't know it, what you have between your ears is the most fantastic computing thing on the planet. Now there are some supercomputers that can add numbers faster than you, but there is no computer on the planet that can do what your little three pound brain can do. However, when you take that three pound brain, as amazing as it is, and compare it to God's infinite brain, we have this finite limited and God's all knowing, I want to get to heaven. I want the assurance that I can get to heaven. Which one do you think I'm going to rely on? This limited three pound brain that not been there before, incidentally, or the all knowing God who says, follow me, I can get you there. Seemed pretty simple to me, but a lot of folks don't get it. Matthew 7, 21, Christ is cut to the bottom line. And he said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And then he went on to say, in other words, there's no cherry picking here. You can't go through and act like this is the buffet line. He went on to say in Matthew 7, 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. And okay, now they're doing some religious stuff there. They're hitting some of the footsteps, but not all of them. And verse 23, he says, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So when we talk about following in the footsteps of Jesus, following God, we're talking about really, really following God, honoring him, by doing his will, as Christ said in Matthew 7, 21. And if you think about it for a moment, when a person just cuts off on their own path, treks out on their own way, they're not honoring God. They're holding their ideas superior to God. They're saying, in effect, I think I can find a better way than God. That's not a compliment to God. That's kind of insulting. Proverbs 3 and 5 would tell us not to lean on our own understanding, but to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And that's really good advice because oddly enough, even though people are trekking off in a thousand different spiritual directions, all of those directions eventually end up in the same place. Maybe not where you think though. But they all eventually end up, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, at the judgment seat of Christ. And at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be held in account for the deeds that we did in the body. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of thinking when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, I would much rather have arrived there having followed God, walked with God, taken the path that God said, other than having been a trailblazer I went off and tried to create my own salvation. Mm. Jeremiah 10, 23 would tell me that's not possible. Hey, share this video if you think it would be good for somebody else. Put your comments below if you'd like. And as always, I hope you have a great day.